Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mias, and today I'm actually going to be comparing Dark Luna More to Forbidden Droplet. Is one better than the other? Which one should you get? Depending on the format, depending on what deck you're playing, etc. So before you start, friendly reminder to like and subscribe, because it motivates me a lot to keep making videos like these. And yeah, let's jump right into it. Alright, so first things first, Dark Luna No More is actually a normal spell card, whereas Forbidden Droplet is a quick play spell card. Both of them have something in common, so they both allow you to negate monster effects on the field without targeting, and also your opponent cannot respond depending on what is going on so for dark ruler no more your opponent simply cannot respond with monster effects in response to Dark Ruler No More, but he can respond with spells and traps, and because of that, he can also respond to his own spells and traps or your own spells and traps in the same chain with his monster effects because Dark Ruler No More states he cannot respond with monster effects to Dark Ruler No More, but it doesn't say your opponent just cannot use monster effects at all. So because of that, there is actually kind of like a drawback. And another drawback is the fact that you cannot deal damage after you use Dark Ruler No More. So in OTK decks, maybe this isn't really good for you. And on top of that, Dark Ruler No More is a normal spell card, which is kind of bait, because if you draw it while you're going first, it is a dead draw. Even if it was once per turn, you could still use multiple per turn, as long as the activation gets negated, but I guess I'm going to cover something around those lines as soon enough. So for Forbidden Drop, this is actually a quick play spell card. Relatively same effect, but unfortunately this time, or I guess fortunately depending on what you're playing, there is actually a cost that forces you to send monsters, spells, or traps from your hand or field to the graveyard as a cost. So in other words, if there's Herald on the field, well, you won't be able to actually send monsters from your hand to the graveyard simply because of the fact that, well, all of your monsters actually get banished, and if you can't even attempt to pay the cost, then you can't even use the card in the first place. And you will be negating monster effects your opponent controls equal to the amount of cards that you sent, and your opponent cannot respond with activated cards or effects of cards with the same card type and the effect part is really important because let's just say my opponent has a vfd and he actually uses the card and i chain forbidden drop now if i send a monster and a spell or a monster or a spell or whatever my opponent could just flip or i guess you know you just activate the effect of the chooch that is already face up on the field and because of that unfortunately vfd is actually going to be resolving because it is going to be destroyed and will not actually get its effect negated by forbidden drop whereas if i actually sent a trap card in order to use the effect of Forbidden Drop, well, all of a sudden he cannot respond with Chooch, the Virtual World Trap, in order to pop his own VFD, and I can actually continue my gameplay safely. Now, there are definitely a few decks that actually benefit off of sending cards, for example, Phantom Knights. I guess sometimes you just have a bunch of just dead cards in your hand because it's, you know, it's kind of Phantom Knight, right? You can actually break on having too many normal summons, or you could actually use Forbidden Drop not only to negate every monster effect your opponent controls, of course, but actually to fuel your graveyard and to actually dodge interruptions. So let's just say your tour guide is getting Veilered or Infinited. I swear to God, I love this term, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, let's just say your tour guide gets hit by an infinite. You can actually just chain Forbidden Drop, and it's kind of like a two-in-one, because the thing is, you don't really want your tour guide to get veilered at all you'd rather summon the monster that you were going to summon because maybe that card is a graph for example and you can actually just like i said summon that graph which is going to float into a monster like again like seer or skarm or farfa and on top of that you negate at least one monster effect your like one monster your opponent controls so there is actually something that you can do with that and also when you use normal spell cards for example well, you can actually just use a bunch of them, I mean, I guess just one because it's a normal spell, you can't really quit chain anything, and then I guess if you had continuous cards on the field or quick play spells, you just use everything, and then you chain forbidden drops and every single spell and one monster, and your opponent literally cannot respond with anything outside of like judgment or... I don't know, some sketchy things like that. Both are definitely really high ceiling cards, but like I said, Dark Ruler is, you know, around four to nine dollars Canadian, whereas Dar uh, Forbidden Job, sorry, is actually $110 Canadian at the moment I'm making this video. So if you're actually trying to get a playset of Forbidden Job just to have that edge in the competitive environment, well, are you really spending 330 to actually get a better playset of cards in your deck, or are you really just flexing? It really does depend, because the thing is, if there's a card like VFD running around, or Zexal, well, Dark Ruler just sits there in your hand and doesn't really achieve anything, 
And not to mention that both of these cards do not deal with the Buster Lock whatsoever, so are they even the option or are they just pluses in order to kind of make sure that your deck can still kind of always play going second? Now, Forbidden Drop being a quick play spell is, you know, significantly better than Dark Ruler being a normal spell because you can actually not only chain it to cards but also set it while you're going first and use it as an interruption. So even on the worst case scenario, I feel like this card is at least a at least a Forbidden Chalice, and there is something I guess that I kind of wanted to mention, but I think it should be respected, and it is the fact that, well, of course you already know that it doesn't target, but it also halves the attack of whichever monster you are negating, so it's kind of like a Lost Wind. Of course, it's only during, you know, until the end of the turn. It doesn't actually prevent you from dealing damage, so of course, if you're playing an OTK deck, this is probably significantly better, and also if someone makes you go first, exactly just like I said, this card is also an interruption which allows you to stay in the game. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter which one you're playing, as long as you remember the main ace, I guess, annoying cards that people are playing, as long as VFD exists, like I said. Dark Ruler, I don't think, will ever be main deck worthy, but I think it is potentially a better side deck card, honestly, than Forbidden Drop, and Forbidden Drop as a side deck card, I don't really like it too much, but as a main deck card, I think it, ma it makes quite a lot of sense. And then you can easily, you know, just remove it from your main deck if you're playing against something like, I don't know, Altergeist, where best case scenario, you negate like a manifestation, uh, sorry, Marionetter, and well, they're gonna chain protocol and you're gonna cry, but yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Altergeist, I guess, if you're playing a trap deck, Forbidden Drop is really nasty because of the reason that I explained before, and it's the fact that you can just use, like, a trap, like a proactive spot removal, like Dragma Punishment, and then, you know, Compose. Your opponent just keeps going negate, 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 if you're if he's playing, like, Pendulums, Endymion, Vortex, Infinity, well, they won't be playing Infinity, but you get what I'm saying. And at the end of the day, all you have to do is literally just go Forbidden Drop, send every single one of my cards, and I guess like a Melusik, negate everything, all of your cards are destroyed or bounced back or whatever, and then you're going to get a search, I guess, if you're sending Melusik, so there is kind of always a possibility of you getting the best value possible, so that's the reason why I think Forbidden Drop, it really does depend on your deck more, and Dark Ruler, well, it depends more on the meta. But yeah, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Once again, don't forget to like and subscribe because it motivates me a lot to keep making videos like these. That's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.